Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. I hope you're all having a great week. Last week I talked about the Kaaba, how its actual origins are very different from what Islam tells us, and how it is not related to Abrahamic religion at all, but has a rather pagan background. Now I want to talk about one of the most important features of the Kaaba, the Black Stone. The Black Stone is a black rock at the eastern corner of the Kaaba. No one really knows its origin or what exactly it is, but Islam tells us again a story of the origin of this stone. The origins of the Black Stone are quite clouded in Islam. There are a few stories regarding when and how the Black Stone came to Mecca. One is that it was given to Adam, but nothing is sure about that claim. What is accepted by most Muslims and Islamic scholars is that when Abraham was building the Kaaba, Ishmael went looking for a stone to place it at the corner. He couldn't find any stone, but while he was searching, the angel Gabriel brought Abraham a pure and white stone. That white stone is the black stone at the Kaaba today. Well, uh, if a white stone is touched by too many sinners, it turns black. If you want to test this at home, you can go out and look for a white stone, then find enough people who just masturbate it, and then let everyone touch the stone, preferably with the hand that the sin was committed with. It will most certainly turn black. If it doesn't work immediately, you can just drop the stone, and maybe in a few thousand years, someone will uh, tell a weird story of uh, the god of masturbation giving the stone to some random guy who was going out and looking for a stone, whatever. Yes, the Islamic belief really is that the black stone was brought by Gabriel from heaven and turned black from white. The heaven part is almost undisputed by the Islamic scholarly consensus, because Muhammad says in Hadith that the black stone came down from heaven. You know, heaven is somewhere above. The color change is also believed to be true, because the same Hadith says that the stone was whiter than milk, but turned black because of human sin. The black stone was respected by both believers and pagans, but the pagans eventually took complete control of it and used it in their pagan rituals. According to early Islamic scholars, when Muhammad was 35 years old, the clans of Mecca renovated the Kaaba and removed the black stone from the Kaaba temporarily. But then they couldn't decide who would put the black stone back in its place again, who would have the honor. They waited for a random person, why ever, and in that moment, Muhammad came in. So they gave him the honor to put the black stone back into its place. This is only an early source that sounds incredibly dubious. After Islam took control, the black stone was destroyed several times by Muslims, heretical sects, and some other unknown people. Whenever it was destroyed, the pieces were cemented together and are held together by the silver frame around it. So in its current form, it is not a complete stone, but rather a shattered stone whose pieces are held together thanks to human effort. The Muslims did a terrible job at keeping such a holy thing safe. Now, according to un-Islamic, unbiased, and more reliable sources, the origin of the stone is neither Abrahamic nor heaven. It is found that the black stone was just venerated and worshipped by pre-Islamic Arab pagans. And the worship of objects was not very uncommon among Arab pagans, neither was it uncommon among Semitic, non-Abrahamic people. And Arabs are considered Semitic people. Even according to early Islamic sources, the black stone was only one of many similar stones that were revered by pagans and symbolized their relations to God or gods. The stones were very often used to ask for fertility, life, rain, and so on, blessings that came from divine sources. According to the earliest biographies of Muhammad, pagans used to worship almost naked at the Kaaba and associated the Kaaba and the black stone with fertility rites and prayers. According to some sources, such stones were associated with cities, tribes, or uh, gods of those tribes. This knowledge is also supported by very early sources. Clement of Alexandria, a theologian who lived in the 2nd century, said that Arabs worship stones. Maximus Tyrius, who was a Greek philosopher in the 2nd century, also provided a more detailed explanation of Arabs worshipping gods through a quadrangular monument and associated stones. According to Jewish sources, Semitic people outside of Judaism were very much involved in stone worship, more so than other people. 
According to the Jewish Encyclopedia 1906, which bases information on very early and contemporary credible sources, Semitic people before Judaism and other Semitic people after Judaism worshipped stones wherever they were, especially in Arabia. There is even a term for this called Betilus, which refers to sacred stones that were used for worship by Semitic people, Greek people, Romans and others. The term Betilus is Greek, but even that comes from Semitic, since Greek and Semitic people had a lot of mutual cultural influence. The stones were very often associated with gods, or seen as signs of gods. And many stones were believed to have come from outside of Earth, and were later identified as meteorites. Pre-Islamic Arabs also had stones that they used to worship gods, just like so many other Semitic peoples. And it looks very much like the black stone at Mecca is the same. The difference is that other people abandoned such practices once they converted to Christianity or Judaism, because it was seen as clear idolatry, which is supposed to be strictly forbidden in Abrahamic religion. While Islam, which is also supposed to be an Abrahamic religion, just kept the practice. The theory about meteorites shouldn't be forgotten. Many experts today believe that the black stone in Mecca is also a meteorite. Some other experts believe that it's merely a rare stone or some sort of glass. It has never been scientifically examined, although there is a myth going on among many Muslims that it had been scientifically examined before and uh, it couldn't be compared to anything else in the entire universe. It never happened. It would be very beneficial to actually scientifically examine the stone. I believe it would either help or extremely damage the Islamic faith. That's probably why Muslims are not interested in studying it, and authorities don't offer any possibility to make a study about that. But then again, if it turned out to be some complete random stone, many Muslims would probably make a new interpretation of some Quran first that they were not able to understand for the last 1,500 years, suddenly saying that stones in heaven are just like stones in our universe. But let's forget about the origins of the stone for a moment, and let's see what Islam does with that black stone. Are you ready? 1. Touching and kissing the black stone According to multiple hadith, when Muhammad arrived in Mecca, he touched and kissed the black stone, and then started doing the tawaf, which is the extremely pagan-looking practice of circling around the Kaaba. 2. Pointing at the black stone during worship Whenever Muhammad passed by the black stone during his unexplainable circles, he would also point at the black stone and shout Allahu Akbar while doing so. <laughs> I'm, I'm just... <laughs> I'm, I'm imagining that right now. Give me a second. 3. Hoping that the black stone will help you. The Messenger of Allah said about the black stone, By Allah, Allah will raise it on the day of resurrection with two eyes by which it sees, and a tongue that it speaks with, testifying to whoever touched it in truth. This is why Muslims nowadays pay respect to the black stone, and hope that it will testify positively for them on a day of judgment. <laughs> I really wonder how that would look with the current shattered form of the stone. Two eyes on separate pieces and a tongue somewhere. Oh, okay, let's just stop. Let's be serious. Studying Abrahamic religion, then looking at such practices in Islam, Islam looks like a very non-Abrahamic, practically non-monotheistic, weird religion that was created by a pagan-influenced merchant in Arabia. So many Islamic practices and beliefs look like very simple pagan practices and beliefs. And going deeper into the Kaaba, the black stone and other things, it looks like Muhammad was not very familiar with what the Bible teaches, which his teachings are supposed to be based on. In fact, let me finish this video with a rather ironic Islamic narration that quotes Omar, Muhammad's very close friend, advisor and second caliph. Omar came near the black stone and kissed it, and said, No doubt, I know you are a stone, and can neither benefit anyone, nor harm anyone. Had I not seen Allah's messenger kissing you, I would not have kissed you. Be even smarter than Omar. Don't follow Muhammad's inventions. Because if you were familiar with Abrahamic religions and the origins of Islam, you would likely never do such practices that were adopted by Muhammad from pagan rituals. The Black Stone, another form of Islamic paganism. Thanks for watching.
If you like this video, please don't forget to like, to subscribe and to share. My videos are not monetized, so you can watch everything without any ads. If you want to support me and my cause, you can support me on Patreon. The link is below in the description. Thank you so much for every kind of support. We'll be together again next week. Have a great weekend. Thank you again and stay away from Islam.